everyone. My name is Varani Kamalrajan from AL5 and today I'm going to be talking about quantitative electrolysis. The selective discharge of ions or the reduction of ions in electrolysis depends on two factors, its position in the electrochemical series and the concentration of its ions. Cations lower in the electrochemical series gets reduced because the E note value of the species lower in the chemical series is more positive. As a result, the reduction reaction is favored more and the ions get reduced. Cations with a higher concentration also gets reduced because as the concentration increases, E note value becomes more positive so reduction reaction is favored. The next topic is about Faraday's laws of electrolysis. There are two laws of electrolysis. Faraday's first law states that the mass of a substance liberated during electrolysis is directly proportional to the quantity of charge passed through during electrolysis. And his second law states that the number of Faraday's required to discharge one mole of an ion at an electrode equals to the number of charges on the ion. From Faraday's first law, we can deduce that the mass is directly proportional to charge. And we already know that the quantity of charge Q is derived from the expression Q is equal to IT, where I is the current and T is the time taken for the charge to be passed. Therefore, we can deduce that the mass M is directly proportional to, to the product of current times time. From Faraday's second law, we can deduce that one mole of an ion requires the same number of Faraday's as its charge. We know that one electron contains 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs, and one mole of ion contains 6.02 times 10 raised to minus 23 electrons. To find the number of coulombs in one mole of an ion, we multiply the number of electrons in one mole times the charge on one electron which is 6.02 times 10 raised to minus 23 electrons times 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19 coulombs. We get the charge on one mole of an ion as 96,500 coulombs. And we already know that one mole of an ion contains the same number of Faraday as its charge. So one Faraday contains 96,500 coulombs. Using these two laws of electrolysis, we can solve many calculations. We are able to calculate the mass of a deposited substance, the volume of a gas liberated, or the charge passed during electrolysis. For example, in this question, we need to calculate the mass of silver deposited at the cathode when a current of 0.5 amperes is passed through a solution of silver nitrate for 15 minutes. In this question, we are given two data. The current passed is 0.5 amperes and the time taken is 15 minutes. Using this information, we need to calculate the mass of silver deposited. The first step is to write down the equation of the reaction taking place. In this case, it is Ag plus plus one electron gives Ag. We can find the charge passed by using the formula Q is equal to It, where I is 0.5 amperes and T is 15 times 60 seconds. We use 15 times 60 because in the formula Q is equal to It, time must always be in seconds. And in the question, we are given time as 15 minutes. To convert it to seconds, we multiply it by 60. Using this formula, we get the charge as 450 coulombs. According to Faraday's second law of electrolysis, we know that one mole of electron gives 96,500 coulombs. So if 96,500 coulomb gives one mole of an electron, then we can say 450 coulombs gives x number of moles. When we cross multiply, we get x as 4.66 times 10 raised to minus 3 mole electrons. And in the equation, the number of mole of an electron and Ag are in 1 is to 1 ratio. Therefore, the number of moles of Ag is also 4.66 times 10 raised to minus, 20, minus 3. We can find the mass of silver using the formula m is equal to n times mr. So we substitute the values 4.66 times 10 raised to minus 3 and 108. It gives 0 0.503 gram, which is the final answer. The next topic is the determination of Avogadro's constant using electrolysis. To determine Avogadro's constant L using electrolysis, we use the formula L is equal to charge on one mole of electrons divided by the charge on one electron. We already know that the charge on one electron is 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19 coulomb. We need to calculate the charge on one mole of electron using electrolysis. The procedure is simple. First, we weigh the pure copper anode and the pure copper cathode separately. And then we arrange the apparatus as shown. 
we use a variable resistor to keep the current constant. We then pass a known amount of constant current for a fixed time interval. We then remove the cathode and anode and wash and dry them with distilled water and then with propanone. We then reweigh the copper cathode and anode. The cathode increases in mass and the anode decreases in mass. The anode decreases in mass because the copper goes into the solution's ions. And the cathode increases in mass because the copper is deposited on the cathode. We always use the decrease in the mass of anode because the copper does not always stick to the cathode so there will be an inaccurate gain in mass. On the screen I have shown a set of sample experimental data. The mass of the anode at the beginning is 56.53 gram and the mass of the anode at the end is 56.4 gram. To calculate the mass of copper removed from the anode, we subtract the mass of the anode at the beginning with the mass of the anode at the end. So we subtract 56.53 and 56.4. So we get mass of the copper removed in this question as 0.13 gram. We know that the quantity of charge passed is 408 coulombs. The first step is to write down the reaction, equation of the reaction taking place, which is Cu2 plus aqueous gives two electrons and Cu solid. We then need to find the number of coulombs taken to reduce one mole of copper ion. We know that 0.13 grams of copper ions gives 408 coulombs. So to calculate the number of moles of copper reduced, we take 63.5 grams and x. To find x, we cross multiply to give 1.99 times 10 raised to 6 coulombs. But this is for 1 mole of copper. To find the charge for 1 mole of electron, we need to divide this value by 2 as the copper ion and the electron are in the ratio 1 is to 2. Therefore, if we divide 1.99 times 10 raised to 6 divided by 2, we get 99,600 coulombs. We then substitute this value in the formula L is equal to charge on 1 mole of electron by the charge on 1 electron. Charge on 1 mole of electron being 99,600 coulombs divided by the charge on 1 electron which is 1.6 times 10 raised to minus 19. And we get 6.2 times 10 raised to 23. This is a very good approximation to the accurate value, which is 6.02 times 10 raised to 23. So we found Avogadro's constant. Thank you.